Hi, this is Steve Parker with the Hurricane Tracker app. Thank you so much for downloading our application, Hurricane Tracker. I wanted to spend a few minutes with you and uh, walk through a video tutorial on how to access storm information and get the most out of the features that our application has to offer. When you first launch the application, it will ask you if you'd like to allow notifications. So if you'd like to receive alerts uh, for storm information, go ahead and click allow. Uh, this is also a helpful tip sheet. We're going to cover most of this, so I'm going to go ahead and dismiss it now. You can access it again later um, in the settings app. So if you allow notifications, you'll be able to select up to three regions to receive push alerts for. Uh, anywhere from the Gulf Coast, Florida, Bahamas, Southeast United States, Mid-Atlantic, New England, Canadian Maritimes, the Caribbean Sea, Bermuda, Eastern Pacific, and Hawaii. And we recommend on clicking uh, three regions that most pertain uh, to you. Uh, so, for example, if you live along the Gulf Coast, you would probably want to select Gulf Coast, which includes Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Uh, maybe if you have uh, friends or family in Florida, you can choose that region. And then uh, you can select up to a third region as well. And you can change these at any time um, in the settings app. So when you first open Hurricane Tracker, it's going to take you to what we call the home page. Uh, so right now on the home page, this is letting you know that uh, there is one hurricane. Uh, the red icon is hurricanes. The orange is tropical storms. We have two tropical storms. Green is tropical depressions. Blue is potential tropical cyclones. And teal color are invest. And you can see we have Hurricane Jose, Tropical Storm Lee, and Tropical Storm Maria at the time of recording this video. And if you scroll down, you can also see the 48-hour outlook from the National Hurricane Center, as well as the five-day outlook from the National Hurricane Center. And right now we have three active systems with no other areas of interest threatening to develop. So there's nothing currently on the maps, but that is one way uh, you can see if there's other tropical waves that are threatening to develop. So when the application launches, it's going to uh, take you to the Atlantic Basin, which is default. For those of our users that need to monitor the Eastern Pacific Basin, if you click on the settings icon, you can change your default to Eastern Pacific so that whenever you open the application, it'll load up the Eastern Pacific homepage and will also take you to the relevant Eastern Pacific sections uh, down here in the sliding icon dock. But if you want to just uh, click on Eastern Pacific, that'll switch the basin over for you. You can see we have one hurricane, Hurricane Norma, in the Eastern Pacific. And uh, we'll scroll down and we can see, the again, the two-day and the five-day outlook uh, from the National Hurricane Center. So I'm going to go ahead and flip back over to the Atlantic Basin here. Now there's a few ways to get to storm information. I'm going to show you two or three. The easiest way is if you see a storm here on the home page, go ahead and click on it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Hurricane Jose. And this is what we call the storm view. This is how you would uh, get to all the critical and important information on a system that you need to track. So I'll kind of start from the top and work my way down here. Um, if you click on this icon here, this will load up our audio date, audio update. We will do audio updates as condition warrants uh, for each system. And if a system doesn't pose any threat to land, we may not issue any audio update. The public advisory, the forecast advisory, and the NHC analysis are all issued uh, by the National Hurricane Center about every three to six hours. And this data is updated in the app instantly when it's updated on the National Hurricane Center server. So I'm going to click on public advisory. This is where you will see information such as wind speed, direction, watches and warnings. Uh, you can also see what hazards will be affecting land, what category the storm is. So this is one of the most important parts is the uh, public advisory. The NHC analysis will show you um, a written discussion which is updated every six hours from the National Hurricane Center. They will also include their key messages, some of the most important information about the storm. So make sure to read those occasionally. Now, whenever there's a storm making landfall, a lot of our users wanted access to local information. You know, what are the wind speeds going to be in my area? How much rain am I going to get? What watches and warnings am I currently under? So we recommend click on, clicking on local forecast. 
And this is going to load up weather data directly from the National Weather Service. So I'm going to put in my area. We li we're in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in my zip code. And you can put in your zip code. You can type in any town or city name. And it will also save it so next time you come back to the section, it will be there. So if we were under a tropical storm watch or warning, uh, it would be listed here. And when you click on that, you'll be able to read all the specific details pertaining to your zip code uh, based on the impacts of a storm. And if you scroll down, you can see uh, your local forecast, or you can also click on detailed forecast and get really detailed as to the exact conditions in your area and what the forecast would be uh, for impacts from a storm in your area. So definitely use that um, if a tropical storm or hurricane is headed your way. Below you will see the latest satellite loop of the storm, the latest National Hurricane Center forecast. If you click on either panel, I'm going to click on National Hurricane Center uh, forecast track. It will load up all of the graphics uh, from the National Hurricane Center. And Again, these are updated in real time every six hours. Uh, you'll also see a sea surface temperature map, a regional radar loop uh, for whatever region the storm is in, as well as the five-day forecasted rainfall totals. Now I'm going to go back. Um, of course, you can click on the arrow buttons up here to go back. You can click on the hurricane icon to refresh the page. You can also pull down on the page to refresh the content. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead, and you can't see it here, but if you swipe from the left side of the screen with your finger, you can go back. If you swipe on the right screen from right side of the screen from right to left, you can uh, go uh, forward. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to scroll down. One of our favorite sections is called All Maps and Graphics. This will kind of take you through uh, a couple of pages of all the important graphics and maps for a system. If you just want to see the National Hurricane Center maps, which is where we just were, you would click here. If you wanted to click uh, here to look at the latest computer models, this will load up all the latest spaghetti plots. And uh, that information, again, is updated every six hours in real time. If you want to look at just the satellites from a storm, uh, you can go ahead and click there to get that information. And one of the best features of Hurricane Tracker is uh, the R graphics section. So we have a forecast team here behind the scenes of the Hurricane Tracker app that manages the app and also monitors the storms. So you will see um, if there's potential of land being threatened, our team will issue the below products as needed. And we'll normally update these one or two times a day as new data comes in about a storm. So this is our alert level map. So you can see we have elevated alert levels here uh, for Cape Cod, uh, the southeastern Massachusetts as that area has the greatest chance of being impacted by the outer bands of Hurricane Jose. And here's our 10 day uh, impact chance map. Uh, so basically we compile all of the available data to give you a number um, as to how it stands today when you're looking at this as to whether or not you could be impacted by the storm and what areas have the highest chances of being impacted by a storm. And again, this is just a snapshot and this may change daily as new information comes in. And then our final product or graphic we issue is our 10 day risk potential. So you can see we have a very low, low, medium and high and uh, we will update those as needed as well. So very unique to the Hurricane Tracker app. Those are special products that our team does offer. All right, and down here at the bottom of the page, there's additional information if you want to sign up for text alerts, email updates, or get access uh, to view Hurricane Tracker on your Mac or PC. So I'm going to click on all maps and graphics and just kind of take you through some of the available information. So here's a satellite loop. You can see the storm track and category forecast. So you can see this system is expected to remain a category one storm and then weaken to a tropical storm. There's our five day alert level map we looked at, our 10 day impact chance map. You can see the current wind field for a storm. You can see where the hurricane force winds are, the tropical storm force winds. You can also see um, where the uh, forecasted uh, hurricane or tropical storm force winds or what regions they're expected to impact. So you can see with this storm, the tropical storm force and hurricane winds are expected to remain offshore. Uh, you can see a surface plot. You can see exactly where the center is located. There are your uh, spaghetti model plots, intensity model plots, uh, some microwave imagery, imagery of the storm. And then if you click on page two, that'll take you to all the official graphics from the National Hurricane Center. 
All right, now if you um, look at the bottom of the app, as I stated a moment ago, we have a sliding icon dock. So if you click on current storms, this page will give you just a brief overview. It'll give you the latest satellite loop, and that may take a few seconds to load uh, because it is loading an animated loop of each storm. And it'll also show you the latest uh, forecast track from the National Hurricane Center. And if you click anywhere uh, within the storm, it'll take you back to the main storm page, which we were just reviewing. So down here at the bottom, uh, Outlook, this will kind of show you what potential systems may, de may be developing. If you scroll within the white area here, you can read the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center. And again, we have the uh, two-day as well as the five-day outlook, a one- to two-week outlook from the uh, CPC. You can see uh, wind shear, uh, low-level steering flow, uh, where the dust in the atmosphere may be. Again, some of these maps may be a little more advanced uh, you know, for meteorologists or forecasters, but you can see the application is chock full of information. Um, I'm going to click on alert history. Here's where you can see our history of push alerts. So you can see we sent a push alert today at 5 p.m. and we will usually include a couple of graphics as well. So whenever you get a push alert from the storm uh, based on what region you're in, when you tap on the notification that comes to your device, it'll load up this view directly. If we go to the next tab, which is discussions, so every now and then we will issue a written discussion, one of the forecasters on our team. So today we wrote a pretty lengthy discussion about Jose, Maria, as well as Lee. And you can go through and read this information and kind of go in depth and see uh, some of the latest information as to why a system may track one way, why it may not track a certain way, and just kind of get a little more information than what the maps, maps provide you. We have a live feed on Twitter where we're constantly posting the latest model updates, the latest real-time changes with the storm. Be sure to check that out. Um, this section here, audio and video updates, will combine a bunch of video updates, our latest video update as well as our audio update. You can see satellites, uh, ocean temperatures. Um, we have a Facebook group if you want to join that, the Saffir Simpson scale. So you can see the Hurricane Tracker app is full of the information that you need to stay on top of the storm. Now, once you're on the home page, if you click on Quick View here at the top, this will basically bypass the main storm section um, and will take you directly to just all the maps and graphics, which you can quickly scroll through just to kind of get a quick update on the storm uh, without going to you know through all of the in-depth information that you saw on this page here. It will basically take you directly to the all maps and graphics section. And again, that's uh, the quick view here. Um, you can also share information at the top right if you want to share um, an image of the Hurricane Tracker app with your family uh, through you know Twitter, iMessage, save, save it to your device, uh, Messenger, Facebook, you know whatever platform you can uh, share this information uh, with your friends and family to also help keep them informed. Well, we hope this video was helpful. If you ever need help with the app, um, go here to the settings section and you can click on contact us to send us an email. Uh, also click on the quick tips sheet here um, and read through some of these for some of the tips that maybe we weren't able to cover in this video. And uh, most importantly, we thank you for choosing Hurricane Tracker uh, to track systems and we hope it's useful and we hope it's comprehensive. And uh, again, thank you so much for downloading Hurricane Tracker and have a great day.